In this video, I'm going to teach you how to name alkane molecules that have branches. Branches are sometimes referred to as substituents. They mean the same thing. First thing that I'm going to do is just show you what a branch is. So what I've drawn here are four alkanes. These are just your standard straight chain alkanes. They don't have any branches. A branch is a carbon atom or a group of carbon atoms that are attached to that straight chain. So here, for example, is going to be a branch. I've put a branch on this molecule. Sometimes molecules have more than one branch. So over here, now I've drawn this molecule. It has two branches. Sometimes the branches are on the same carbon atom. So here I'm drawing a molecule that has two branches on the same carbon atom. And then let's draw, let's draw a branch on this molecule as well. Actually, let's give it a couple branches. Let's do one right here and one right here. So this, these are branches, just a carbon atom or groups of carbon atoms that are hanging off of our parent chain. And what we're going to do is learn how to name these types of molecules. Before we get into naming the molecules, I want to give you the names of the branches because that's going to be important. And what I've done here is given you a list of the six most common branches that we see in organic chemistry. These are one carbon branches going all the way up to six carbon branches, carbon atoms all in a row. And this little line that I've drawn here is used to indicate that this is the point of attachment where the branch attaches itself to the parent chain or to, to the main alkane chain. So this is just the point of attachment. When we have only one carbon in our branch, the branch's name is methyl. Two carbons in a branch is ethyl. Three carbons is propyl. Four is butyl, five is pentyl, and six is hexyl. And these names might seem a little bit kind of familiar to you. They are based off of the names of the alkane molecules. So for example, a one carbon alkane we call methane. It has a different ending, methane, to tell us that it's a molecule. Uh, substituents have the same prefix, so they have the same beginning, but they have a different ending to let us know that it's a substituent or a branch. So the beginning part of the name tells us how many carbon atoms there are, like prop means three carbons or but means four carbons, and the ending of the name, the il, tells us that it's a branch or a substituent. So now let's move on to learning how to name these molecules. When we're looking at a molecule that has a branch, the first thing that we're going to do is locate the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms in the molecule. Longest continuous chain. So we're going to just kind of systematically approach this. We're going to start at one end of the molecule. Let's just say we start here. And we're going to count carbon atoms to come up with the longest possible chain. So if we start here and we start counting, this is, this is going to be one. This would be two. This would be three, and if we went this way, that would be four. So I've come up with a four carbon chain for this molecule. Let's look at our other options. One, two, three, four. That's also four. So we have two ways that we could have a four carbon chain. We're going to keep that in mind. There's one more option here. If we start at this carbon atom and we go this way, that's three carbons, that's less than four. So this is not the longest chain. Remember our goal is to find the longest chain of carbon atoms. The longest chain of carbon atoms that we could find is four. And so what I'm gonna do next is just highlight those four carbon atoms right there. Um, now you might be wondering, how did I choose this way? Um, how did I know to not choose this way? Because we said that both of these were equal four carbons. It's really just uh, your personal preference. If there is two ways to come up with the exact same number of carbon atoms, you can just choose whichever one you want. They're both going to give you the same name, so you can't mess it up. There isn't a right way or a wrong way. This longest continuous chain of carbon atoms that I've located here, we refer to this as the parent chain. It's like, you know, the main chain of the molecule. And the substituents, or the branches, are the things that are attached to the parent chain. Once we've identified the parent chain, our next job is to number the carbon atoms in order from uh, starting at number one. And we're going to number them in order starting at the end that is closest to our branch. So we have two ends. This is one end, and this is the other end. 
and we want to start at the end that's closest to our branch, which is right here. So that means um, that this is closest to the right-hand side, so we want to number our carbon atoms starting on the right-hand side, and we're going to number them in order. Number one, number two, number three, number four. Let's just practice that again, like before we continue on with the name for this molecule, let's just practice all of that with this molecule over here. Practice finding the parent chain and numbering the parent chain. So we want to look again, look for the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. Here's, uh, we'll just start here and we'll just kind of try all of our di different options. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It looks like we have a lot of options for four. One, two, three, four. Remember I told you when you have a lot of options that give you the same result, you can choose whichever one of those you want. So I'm just going to be different. I'm going to go this way right here. One, two, three, four. And I'm saying that this is my parent chain right there. And then let's also practice numbering that parent chain. We want to start on an end. And we want to start on the end that's closest to our substituents. Well, in this case, it's a tie. Our substituents are right in the middle. Whether we start from the left side or the right side, it's just going to end up the same. And again, in a situation like that, you can't screw it up. Just start at whatever side you'd like. So I'm going to start from the left. One, two, three, four, just like that. Okay, so we've practiced finding parent chains. We've practiced numbering parent chains. Let's work now on actually naming the molecule. When we name the molecule, the first thing that we're going to do is name the substituent. To name the substituent, we have to give its location, like what carbon it's attached to, and also give its name. So on this molecule, our substituent is located on carbon number two, and it is a one carbon substituent, so its name is methyl. Sometimes students get a little bit confused about how to tell how many carbon atoms are part of a substituent. Like they look at this and they think, isn't this a two carbon substituent? Because there's two carbons here. But every carbon only gets to count be counted one time. So this carbon that I've numbered two, this carbon is being counted as part of the parent chain, which means that it can't be counted as part of the substituent or the branch. The only part that we can count as the branch is this little guy out here, just this one little guy all by itself. So again, um, we start the name of the molecule by giving the location of the substituent, its location is number two, and giving the name of the substituent. One carbon, one carbon, its name is methyl. We separate the number from the name with a dash. We always, in our names, we always separate numbers from letters with a dash. Once we give the location and the name of our substituent, then we just say the name of the parent chain. The name of the parent chain, we just treat it like a regular alkane. So this is a four carbon alkane. A four carbon alkane would be called butane. And we just put that name right there so we separate, we don't separate letters from letters at all. So there's no space here in between methyl and butane. There's no comma or dash or anything like that. This is the name of the molecule, 2-methylbutane. Let's take a look at this molecule over here. Now this one's a little bit different because we have two substituents um, on, the, on the parent chain. And they are um, both one carbon substituents. Remember when we're looking at the number of carbon atoms in a substituent, we can't include carbon atoms that are part of the parent chain. So we have a one carbon substituent here and a one carbon substituent here. Let me just kind of make their names, like write their names up here. So this first substituent we're looking at is on carbon number two, and it's a methyl because it's one carbon. And our other substituent right here, it's on carbon three, and it's also a methyl. So we have a methyl on two, and we have a methyl on three. When we have two or more identical substituents in a molecule's name, we don't need to repeat them at the beginning of the name. So don't, don't write this down because this isn't going to be correct. We don't need to say two methyl three, again, don't write this down, two methyl, three methyl, uh, four carbon chain would be butane. So we don't need to say this, 2-methyl, 3-methyl butane, because it's kind of redundant. When we have multiple identical substituents, like multiple methyl groups, instead of saying methyl-methyl, we can just say 
dimethyl. Di means that we have two. So we can say dimethyl, and then we only have to say methyl one time instead of saying it over and over again. But we do still have to say the location of each one of the methyl groups. Like that's something that's important for us to communicate. We can't just say dimethyl, we have to say where those methyls are located. So we're gonna say two comma three, that tells us that on carbon two and also on carbon three, there are methyl groups, two total methyl groups. Again, we're gonna separate our numbers from our letters with dashes, and we separate numbers from numbers with commas. That's just convention. And letters and letters have no separations between them at all. So this is 2,3-dimethylbutane. Let's try another one down here. Um, first step, remember, we want to find the longest continuous chain of carbon atoms. We're looking for the parent chain. So if we start right here, obviously we don't want to go to one of these ends because that's really short. If we start right here and we go all the way to the other side of the molecule, that's going to be six carbons. That's the, definitely the longest chain. Um, this would also be six carbons, and this would also be six carbons. We could choose any one of those to be the parent chain. I'm going to go with this right here. Step two, we want to number those carbon atoms starting at the end closest to our substituent. So we're going to number from left to right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Step three, name our substituents. On this molecule, we have two substituents. They're both uh, one carbon substituent, so both of them are methyls. So it's really similar to this one here. We have a methyl on carbon number two, and we have another methyl on carbon number two. Now remember, we don't have to say methyl methyl, we can say dimethyl, but we do have to say the location of each one of our methyl groups. So this molecule right here, I'm gonna move this down to make room for its name. This molecule right here with its dimethyl, they are both located on carbon number two. So we're gonna say two, two, dimethyl. This is uh, another thing that sometimes students get confused about. They feel like I shouldn't have to say the two twice. I should just say two dimethyl. But our rules say that every single substituent gets its own number, even if the number is repeating. So every substituent is going to be identified by its own number. So we're going to say two two dimethyl and then follow that by the name of the parent chain, a six carbon chain, which is hexane. 2,2-dimethylhexane. And here is our very last example. Uh, first job, find the longest continuous chain. So if we start here and we go all the way to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That looks pretty long. Let's try going up to here. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's not as good. So, so far, this is definitely the longest chain. And it looks like that's about as um, long, the longest possible chain. Let's try from here to here. Just see what that is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Also a six. So we want to go with this right here. I'm going to put the dots on that parent chain like that. And we want to number it starting at the end closest to our substituents. So we want to start on the right-hand side, closest to our substituents. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Next thing that we want to do is locate and name our substituents. This time we have two different substituents. One of our substituents located on carbon number three is our one carbon substituent, the methyl. I'm just going to write its name down right here, three methyl. Our other substituent is located on carbon number four, and this is a two carbon substituent. This is an ethyl. So this guy's name is 4-ethyl. So we're going to begin by saying the names of these two substituents, and then we'll follow that up with the name of the parent chain. When you have two substituents in a molecule that are not identical, so in our previous examples we had two methyls, two identical substituents, when you have different substituents in the molecule and you're putting them together in the beginning of the molecule's name, you always list them alphabetically. It seems like it would make sense to list them in number order, 
like start with the three and then go to the four, but that is not what we do. We list them in alphabetical order by their name. E comes before M in the alphabet, so that means this one is named first, even though it has a higher number, because this is totally based on alphabetical order. So this is going to be 4-ethyl, that's going to come first, and then we're going to name our other substituent 3-methyl. Remember that we always separate numbers and letters with dashes. So 4-ethyl-3-methyl, and then we're going to follow all of that up with the name of the parent chain. 7-carbons is a heptane.